Hop in the photic zone, we are the sunlight's child. My name is Hannah. My name is Daniela. And we are prepared to take you on an amazing journey through the beautiful pelagic and photic zone of the ocean. So, we are the photic and pelagic zone. Guess what? There are anywhere you can find a body of water. The photic zone of the ocean is the top layer of the water, nearest to the surface of the ocean. Because of that, it is also known as the sunlight zone. The pelagic zone refers to the whole water column, which is space between the water surface and the bottom of the body of water. For our trip, we will focus on the photic zone and the mesopelagic zone. The photic zone is by average the top 200 meters of the water, because 200 meters is where sunlight penetrates the water to allow photosynthesis. As a part of the pelagic zone, the photic zone is also called the epipelagic zone. Due to the presence of photosynthesis, you can recognize the zone through the presence of plant life, notably phytoplankton and larger attached algae. To visit this beautiful zone, our company offers tours through clear submarines, scuba diving lessons, snorkeling lessons, free diving opportunities, and just any way you can freely swim in the open ocean. The conditions in the mesopelagic zone are harsher than in the epipelagic zone. The low levels of light in this zone make it possible for photosynthetic organisms to survive in this ocean region. Light, oxygen, and temperature decrease with depth. Pressure are far greater than in the epipelagic zone. Pressure increases by one atmosphere with every 30 feet of depth. So we have some tough guys living here. There are so many organisms that are residents in our beautiful photic zone. Around 90% of all marine life live here. Organisms that photosynthesize and depend on sunlight for food in the ocean are all here. Of course, first will be our lovely phytoplanktons. These are the photic zone's producers. These guys are abundant in the photic zone and they perform up to 95% of all the photosynthesis that occur in the ocean. On our trip, we provide high-tech magnifying glasses so you can see these beautiful creatures closely. We do have some more exciting organisms with us here that we don't need magnifying glasses to see. All the nectons. Due to the abundant food source in the zone, nectons enjoy it here. They are the secondary consumers of the photic zone and are the largest and most obvious animals here. Coming on our trip, you'll see the most of nectons. These are the fishes, marine mammals, worms, sponges, mollusks, sea stars, reptiles. While some of these large animals feed on fish, others, such as the villain whale, feed on plankton. So supply and demand, these big guys come over all the time. If you're lucky, you might meet one. In the mesopelagic zone, there are some pretty strong animals, and due to the interesting environment, they are defined as semi-deep sea animals, like the swordfish. They spend much of their time during the day swimming about in the upper regions of the mesopelagic zone and enter shallower waters at night to feed off of smaller fish, and also some squid and cuttlefish. These are the most commonly seen mollusks in the mesopelagic zone. Something that you might find also above the epelagic zone is the pelagic birds. Pelagic birds, also called oceanic birds or seabirds, live in open seas, oceans rather than inland or around more restricted waters such as rivers and lakes. Pelagic birds feed on planktonic crustaceans, squid and forest fish. They live above the pelagic zone, so they are common visitors too. Here is one of the food chains you will see coming along with us. It all starts when the phytoplanktons, then the zooplanktons eat them. The krill prey on zooplanktons. The small fish eat the krill. The penguins enjoy the small fishes. Then the seals love penguins, and the orca enjoys the seals. Oh, don't forget where the phytoplanktons get their food. They get energy from the sun. They consume carbon dioxide and release oxygen. Very necessary. But there are more necessary actions that need to be taken by us humans. There are so many harmful things that we as humans throw into it. Fishing nets are drugs across the seafloor, dynamiting coral reefs, overfishing popular species, and poisoning all harm the biome. Pollutions from humans like fertilizers and household chemicals harm multiple parts of the aquatic biome. Trash and oil from boats pollute waters and animals in the ocean. Also, there are more and more plastic waste that covers the much needed sunlight over the photic zone. During our trip to the photic zone, we will also do our part in protecting the environment. Everyone will be assigned a bag to help us collect as much plastic waste as possible and rescue the sunlight. 
is hopping our tour at the same time of enjoying gorgeous marine scenery, helping the environment and giving back what we take are the models of this journey. We'll see you there!